All right, so good evening, first of all. Uh, thanks for coming. And I guess let's start with a basic thing. Who here has ever heard of PayPal? That's actually a lot of you. Okay, who actually has used PayPal? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks to that, they can actually pay me to be here. So that's awesome. Good. So we're, we're getting started. Um, so we've got 30 minutes. We're going to cover five things today. Sounds like a lot. It's not going to be a lot. Hopefully you're not going to fall asleep. The motivation is you do have alcohol once you actually live through all of this. So first of all, we're going to talk about a little bit, not too much about what is PayPal. Just give you a bit of context. Second thing is, hey, you know, fashion. We're all here for fashion. How do you actually succeed in fashion online? And how do you do it uh, cross-border? Third thing is, hey, you know, what can PayPal actually tell you about fashion? We're a payments company, but surprisingly, we actually do know a little bit about fashion. Then, hey, if you want to start a fashion business, you want to start selling online, is there anything that PayPal can actually do for you? And what is it? How does it work? And uh, finally, which is, you know, going a little bit into the future, in terms of, hey, what's actually going to happen in the future of payments and the future of internet? And how is shopping two or three years from now online going to be completely different than it is today? All right, so you guys ready to get started? Good, perfect. Okay, good. We got some enthusiasm. We got to do it the manual way. So... We're doing here. So in general, hey, we've been in love with fashion for uh, for a very long time. Uh, so a little bit about PayPal. So last year, uh, and I promise you, this is like the only stats I'm going to bore you with. So we processed about $280 billion of payments. It's a lot of payments. One fourth of that was actually through mobile devices. So who has a smartphone here? Good. Who has two? <laughs> okay. I know there's some perverts in the crowd. Who has three? There's always somebody. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. So, hey, we all have smartphones. Uh, and right now, life has completely changed. Seven years ago, eight years ago, when you wanted to buy something, you had to, uh, you know, go home, sit at your desktop, connect to the internet, maybe even use a dial-up modem to do that. Take time for the page load. It was a pain in the ass, right? Now you simply take out your phone, you're on the bus, you're on the tram, you're in the subway, you're walking down the street. Hopefully you're not going to bump into anything. You can buy things essentially on your phone. You know, two clicks, three clicks, boom, you're done. So, one fourth of all the transactions that we're doing are happening on mobile devices. And that's growing pretty quickly. So, hey, we process a lot of payments, five billion last year, it's about 10,000 every second. And a lot of that's for fashion companies. But before we get to that, a couple more questions. Who here actually shops online? Okay, good. Fashion, anybody buy fashion online? Great, okay. From outside of the country, from outside of Poland. Good, perfect. Who wants to buy me a drink after this? <laughs> Nobody? There we go. Perfect. Good. Somebody. So I was going to say, we work with a lot of big brands. These are just some of the brands that we actually work with. We help them process payments throughout the world. Uh, you may have heard of some of these companies, like weird companies like Nike or Gucci or things like that. But the company I want to focus on for a second is ASOS. You guys heard of ASOS? Yeah. Good. Does anybody know what ASOS actually stands for? Ah, good. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but ASOS, huge company, super successful, uh, selling in 140 different countries in the world, right? One of the biggest online fashion retailers anywhere. That's what their store looked like in 2000. <laughs> it's changed a little bit, huh? So ASOS actually stands for as seen on screen. So what you see is what you get. And that's essentially ASOS's approach to international expansion. Uh, and why I'm showing you that is one, they're super successful at expanding internationally. And two, they focus on a couple of basic things when they're looking at entering into a new market. The first thing that they focus on is do we have the right delivery method? Can we actually deliver our product to people? The second thing they look at is, do we have the right way for people to actually be able to pay us? Oh, so if you're selling something online, you actually do want to get paid. Kind of works that way. Then they look at, okay, can we actually offer people an easy way to return that product to us? Once they only have those things, they start thinking about, okay, maybe we can expand this market into something different, uh, localize the language, start getting some sort of local services, local customer service, et cetera. It's those three things that they focus on. And keep that in mind, because I guess, you know, if we're looking at growing a fashion company, I guess ASOS we can look at as a benchmark. Zalando, has, Zalando which you also probably know, has a very similar approach to uh, global expansion. Right? So keep those three things in mind. So a couple examples of success stories from Poland. So we're not just talking about really big companies like ASOS or Zalando that, you know, you see everywhere. Small companies. So TAF1, anybody heard of these guys? Excellent. That's exactly what I was hoping for. So this is a company that was started by a couple in 2014, and they make custom-made clothing. So pants, shirts, 
different things, you know, you decide how you want it to look, they'll actually still put it together for you, different patterns, different styles. They started, decided that, okay, Poland is great, but we want to start selling internationally. And they did. Today, two years later, they're selling the UK, Germany, Norway, and they're, you know, one of the basic things, I mean, they're one of our customers, they're using PayPal to actually accept their payments from people in all these countries. Another example, so it's not just one company, so Napo Gloves. Another company from Poland, may not have heard about, running since 2014, they sell, they solve a very basic problem. Poland, unfortunately, we're not a very warm country. I come from Canada, not any better, so not being a hypocrite here. Uh, but if you have a, a smartphone, which we all have at least two or three of, in the wintertime, it's actually pretty hard to use your phone. So they solved that problem with gloves that you can actually use for touchscreen. But they figured, well, you have touchscreen gloves, but they're usually ugly. So let's make really cool designer touchscreen gloves. Novel idea, very cool, picked up, and all of a sudden they're no, not just selling in Poland, very short period of time, selling all across Europe. Right? And again, you don't need to be able to ship the product, but you also need to be able to get paid for that product. And lastly, because you know I like doing things in threes, so Spock socks. Some of you wear socks, some of you don't wear socks like me, which is great. But if you have socks for the winter, you probably know that either they're super boring and black and they all match and you don't have no problem matching them, or they're different shapes and colors and they usually don't look cool if you don't match them properly. So these guys figured, well, let's screw that. Let's just sell people socks that don't match to begin with. And they solved a great problem because now you don't need to worry about matching your socks and they've had a huge success, same thing. So operating for about two years and selling not just in Europe, but globally, Australia, Canada, US, European Union, everywhere, right? And again, you know, accepting payments uh, through PayPal. And why I keep repeating that is not just because I work for the company, we actually do solve a couple problems, and I'll get to that. But before I do, in terms of people shopping online. So 70%, I know I promised no more numbers, but there's just a few more. 70% of people who go online actually buy something online. Pretty good stat, right? And half of the people who go online and buy something buy fashion, buy clothing, buy apparel, buy shoes, buy accessories. So everybody that's in here, hopefully, and we're here to talk about fashion, half the people that are online and are buying want to buy something that you're thinking about or selling, right? And same thing goes for cross-border. Half of the stuff that's being bought from other countries is being bought, is, is essentially fashion and apparel. And what's interesting, when we did a survey um, in 29 different countries to understand you know, what people buy, why people buy, where they buy from, 50% of people when they buy online, they don't care where the, where the store is located. Is it Poland? Is it Estonia? Is it UK? Unimportant. Um, almost half of them don't even know if they're shopping, you know, where they're shopping from. So when people do shop cross-border, and this is important for you to, to think about when you're thinking, you know, I don't want to just sell in Poland, I want to sell to the, all the European Union, or I want to sell anywhere in the world. It's, you know, why do, what do people actually consider when they're shopping online? Hey, so first of all, why do they shop online? They want to find better prices. Okay, great, but if you're not selling the same product, you're selling something different, you know, it's about selection. So finding something, not, something that people don't have, something that's not available in your country, right? Um, they look at, you know, the reputation of the store, but hey, if you're a new store, like the three that you've seen, don't necessarily know the brand, right? So it's not Asos or Zalando, it's a company that you don't know, so that store may not have a reputation. So you need to think about how can you actually offer people who want to buy in your store trust, right? Because they want to trust you. They don't know you, but they want to trust you. They want to trust the fact that, hey, we're going to get the product that we ordered. It's going to be a quality product. It's going to get to us in a reasonable amount of time. And, you know, if I don't get the product, I'm going to get my money back. So trust in online sales, especially from a country that you don't live in, is super important. You buy something from Poland, you don't get the product, you can always jump in the car or the train, drive to the address, knock on somebody's door and hope they open it. Right? If you're buying something from Ireland, not likely you're going to do that. So, when people are thinking about buying online, there's four things that they really, really, really pay attention to and it's important for them to be able to buy, especially internationally. First of all, they care about free shipping. If you can offer them free shipping, you won half the battle. Second thing they care about is they actually want to be sure that they're going to be able to pay safely. Right? So their financial details are not going to be stolen. They're, uh, you know, they're actually going to get the product that they ordered. Right? It's not going to be different. You can order something that's red, turns out to be pink, you want to return it, you can't. Bit of an issue, especially if you paid some serious money for it. 
And the last one, it's free return shipping. So if you think back to what I'd mentioned about ASOS five minutes ago, what are the three things that they look at when they're looking to expand into a new market? Being able to deliver the product, being able to offer relevant payment methods, and giving people the option to actually return that product. So exactly the same thing that people in the survey said and that you need to pay attention to if you want to start selling globally. So getting to how we can actually help and why I'm actually here. So as I mentioned to you, PayPal, some of you use it. A lot of you actually do, so I you know, appreciate that. But just really quickly, we have a bunch of different services we offer. I'm not going to bore you with the details. All I'm going to tell you is how is PayPal different than paying with other methods? So we're going to look at it from two points of view. First of all, consumer point of view. You have a website. You're selling something. You've paid for advertising or to get somebody to get onto that website. They've selected that product. You want them to be able to pay for that product as easily as possible, right? You don't want them to be you know, looking for the credit card, you know, trying to find the details, typing in 16 digits, their first name, their last name, their foot size, their date of birth, their, you know, all these details to actually be able to complete a transaction, especially on a mobile device. It's a pain in the ass. As easy as possible. And that's where we come in. It's convenience. So this is what it looks like with PayPal when you want to buy something. You get to the shopping cart. You have a PayPal button. You type in your email and your password. You log in. And all you do is confirm your payment. And essentially, as long as it took me to explain to you how that actually works, is as long as it takes you to actually complete the transaction. Could it get any easier than that? Actually can. Because once you log in the first time onto your store, and hopefully your products are going to be so awesome that people are going to keep coming back, the next time they come back to your store, it works like this. You pick PayPal. You've already been logged into there before. You've already made a payment before. The pre-authorization is already there. You don't even need to enter your email and your password. You're already redirected to just the confirmation page. You've made your payment. So now when you're thinking, okay, I'm doing this on a desktop, sure, I can type in quickly my email and my password on a desktop, but if you're doing this on a mobile phone or a tablet, it takes a little bit more time. If you can do it this quickly, think of what happens to your conversion, right? People are starting to buy really quickly. So that's in terms of convenience, but going back to what we were talking about in terms of what's important. Trust is important, yeah? Being able to return the product is important. So what, what are some other things that we've, that we've done? So we have something called buyer protection and seller protection. So we want you to be able to offer your buyers the convenience or the comfort of safety. Essentially saying, hey, you may not know this company, but they accept their payments through PayPal. So what that means is anything you buy is guaranteed. Make the purchase, you get the product, perfect. Make the purchase, don't get the product, you get your money back. You get the product, it's different than what you ordered, you get your money back. So buyers, fantastic, but you're not buyers, you're sellers, right? And unfortunately, there's you know, situations where you have fraudulent buyers, people that are trying to cheat you. Offer the flip side of that, it's called seller protection. So, dear seller, sell a product, have proof of shipment, if somebody claims that they didn't get the product, but you can prove to us that you've, proved, that you've sold it, that you've shipped it, you get your money back. Keeping it balanced, going in there and actually giving that, you that, that, that feeling of trust for both sides. Great, we solved the first problem, which is safety. Second problem is, hey, I'm buying something from the UK, or I'm selling something to, to the US, which by the way, uh, I forgot to mention the three main corridors where companies from Poland sell to, it's US, UK, and Germany. Yeah? Big quarter. So if you're actually thinking about selling, place you might, want to, uh, you might want to consider. But we're actually going to get to that as well, because we also have a service that helps you figure out where you might actually want to sell. Refunded returns. So you buy something from the UK, you get a pair of shoes, wrong size. Now you need to pay, what, 15, 20 euros to send it back? All of a sudden, if you're paying 100 euros for shoes, with the risk of having to pay 20 euros to send it back if the size is wrong, you might not actually want to buy those shoes. But if you have somebody that's going to tell you, well, you know, if you buy those shoes and it's the wrong size, I'll actually give you back your money for sending that product back. <laughs> Did I miss something? Do I have something on my back? No, you need like a stick a note, kick me or anything? All right. Right? You get that money back. So as a buyer, that's fantastic. But as a seller, it's the same thing. Right? You can now offer your buyers from around the world who don't know you or your product, 
not only safety, but also the option to return that product to you free of charge. Not a bad deal. Then, great, so you have a fantastic product, you have a website, you have a payment method you can trust, you can offer free return shipping. Uh, where do you sell to? Well, again, you know, because of all these transactions that we process from around the world, we actually have quite a lot of data. Not as much as the guys that are hosting us. They, have, they know everything about everybody, about everyone. Um, so we're not quite there yet, but we do know a lot. And because of that, we've actually put together called, something called PayPal Passport. Uh, and what PayPal Passport is, it's information about 29 different countries from across the world, including Poland, in terms of what people are interested in buying, uh, how much, what do you need to know in terms of customs? How can you actually ship the product there? Uh, you know, what are local holidays, festivals, celebrations, and things like that that you can target if you want to do promotions? So all these basic informations about a, a country that you might want to sell into, you have that available here. Completely free of charge, you go on to paypal.com slash pl, it's in Polish, it's in English, slash passport, you have all that information available. So a couple tips to, uh, to stay out of trouble for, pe for people who are actually selling online as well, because you know, we offer protection, but you know, it's also about being smart. So hey, first of all, if you're shi shipping products that are of high value, worth more than $750, uh, you know, get an actual signature with the, uh, you know, with, with the proof of delivery, right? Your courier the courier company can get that. Uh, it doesn't work just for us, it works for you know, credit cards as well, for chargebacks. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's much more respected and it's much easier to win a case uh, if somebody claims that they didn't actually get the product, right? So that's one thing. Uh, second thing, if you know, a buyer files a complaint uh, or files a chargeback that uh, you know, they didn't get the product, it's damaged, it's whatever, respond as fast as possible. It builds up uh, credibility, right? And uh, lastly, when you ship the product, actually ship it to the address that was in the order, not the address that you were later contacted. Oh, you know what, don't ship it to my, my, my home, ship it to my office, or ship it to this PO box, or ship it to my sister. No, ship it to the address that was on the order. Because that's one of the ways that they try to circumvent that, right? Uh, and lastly, and this might sound very basic, but unfortunately it's true and it's super important. When you're selling something and you get an email notification that you've received money, actually go onto your account and check if you've actually received that money. Because it's very easy to send somebody a fake email saying, you know, I've paid you. Actually go and check if you've been paid. So, you know, it's like any kind of other things in life is just common sense, right? To actually be able to stay safe online. So, you don't have a website. Does that mean you can't sell online? Well, actually, you can. So, um, you can't actually sell stuff on Instagram, but if you can accept payments in any way you want, then you can sell through any channel. So we've got a fantastic example of a, uh, of a merchant, a lady, an older lady, actually on a small island in Japan that I can't even pronounce, that sells handmade jewelry. So she buys products from China, makes them into something else, posts the stuff on Instagram, bracelets, necklaces, earrings, things like that. And simply when people wanna buy something, they contact her, she simply sends them a request money notification. So, you know, can you send me $120 for this product? You click pay and you're done. You don't even need a store to actually sell things if you have a way of actually accepting money. And now the last part, which is the future of commerce. Hey, so we all know, you know how it used to work back in the day. You had people riding around in wagons, selling stuff. Then you actually had stores. Then you had department stores. Then you had online stores that are actually shipping things, which is great. Now you can create an online store to sell something in probably two minutes, right? Sell a product. But why do you actually need an online store? to actually sell things. There's so many new ways and new channels in which you can actually sell things. So we've launched something in the US, hasn't come to Europe yet, but essentially this is what the future of commerce is. It's to turn every single channel, digital channel, where you actually have contact with a customer, or even with us, right, into a sales channel. So when you have a blog, why do you need to, that's advertising sneakers or discussing sneakers. Why do you need to redirect somebody to another page where they need to put that product into a basket, where they need to then confirm their payment and then ship it and so forth? Why just not put a buy button directly with that product? So if we have all the knowledge, we can link the buyer and the seller and have access to their warehousing information, which we do. Click that button, select your size, confirm payment. Hey, we know who you are. We know where you ship your product. 
we have your payment credentials. You've made payments before. You just made a payment directly from a blog without actually go, being redirected anywhere. Do the same thing through emails, right? If you get an email for a t-shirt, hey, I always buy black t-shirts. I get an email for a t-shirt. Hey, we have a new, new black t-shirt for you. Why do I need to be redirected to the store to put it in my shopping cart and so forth? Directly from the email. Click it, buy now. What size do you want? Medium, confirm payment, done. They're gonna ship it to the exact same place they shipped the last 17. And does this actually work already? It does. So Pinterest, anybody use Pinterest here? Good, half of you are still awake, great. So Pinterest has introduced something called buyable pins, which is now being powered by, uh, by PayPal. So what that means is you see something cool on Pinterest, there's a buy button there. All you do is you click on that buy button and you can simply buy it directly from Pinterest, right? Same thing happened with uh, Facebook, right? So they've introduced um, another company you may know called Uber. Facebook and Uber working quite closely. You can now, when you're saying, you know, meeting up with a friend, hey, let's go for a coffee. Okay, let's meet here and here. Here's the address. That address shows up as a hyperlink. You click on that link. You get an option to order an Uber directly from your app, and you can pay for that Uber directly from Messenger. Why do you need to be redirected to the app, redirected to something else, to something else to make that payment? Why not simply all that information stored in the phone? It's all stored in the cloud. Now it's all starting to be connected. Right? So in summary, you know, where's the future of payments going? One, it's actually being able to let you pay anywhere, anything, anyway. The second way in which payments are going is they're completely disappearing. I mean, let's be honest. When we're buying something online, we don't actually want to think about paying for something. We don't wake up in the morning thinking, I'm going to go to the bank, get out money, and I'm going to go and pay for something with cash. No, you wake up in the morning thinking, I want a new T-shirt, thinking I want a new, you know, computer. I want a new... Apple, I don't know, whatever the hell they're going to come up with next, right? You don't actually think about the paying. So the payments are starting to happen in the background, and you have that with Uber. You order an Uber, you get in, you get out, it's paid for, right? You have that with uh, your Spotify, your Netflix subscription. It happens completely in the background. And more and more things, the payments are starting to happen in the background. So payments are slowly, the actual process of paying, it's actually disappearing. And that's the way in which commerce is going. Just like with this, with the buyable pins, with the in context, uh, with the in context buy buttons, payments are disappearing as an actual process. So to summarize, um, first of all, for anybody that's thinking about launching a uh, an online store and wants to start accepting PayPal. We've got a special link for you here, paypal slash forfashion.com. If you click on that, you can open up a PayPal account. You get a uh, six month promo rate, uh, so discounted rate for uh, transactions within the European Union, uh, if you wanna start using that. So specifically for, uh, for fashion, offers valid until end of September. Why would you wanna do it? Hey, it takes literally two minutes to set up an account and you can start accepting payments from 200 countries in the world in 26 different currencies. So you wanna start selling anything, you're ready to go. And that's it. I'm done.